I'm in the medical field. So my background is ultrasound. So registered vascular technologist is my fancy name. And that just means ultrasound of veins and arteries. And I've been in the field for a number of years. So the day for me um, is a lot of driving. I drive about 800 miles a week. I cover a lot of territory. And then when I'm in the field, it's, you know, long cases of standing on my feet, sometimes eight, nine hours a day. So at the end of the day, after I've put a long day of work in, once I get home, my priority is usually to get changed and start dinner. As I'm doing that, I have found that the, the kitchen in our home is just a place that everybody gravitates to and they'll sit at the bar and, um, and talk to me. And if you have teenagers, you know that anytime they want to talk to you, you should, you should listen. Um, it's become a really important time and it's just kind of been built in because I like cooking. I like being in the kitchen and um, the kids were all there together. You know, unfortunately, as I would come home from work and my legs were feeling and tired and achy and heavy, instead of, you know, jumping in like I used to, I found myself kind of isolating and needing an hour or so to decompress. And by the time I, I came out and felt up to doing my normal routine, the kids had already moved on. And so I was really missing that quality time with my family. You know, having an active lifestyle and being healthy um, is something that I committed to even as a young adult. And, you know, some of that was just knowing my own family history. For me, that outlet has always been running. I really enjoyed the solitude of it, putting on a podcast or an audio book and just kind of getting my mind right and coming in and really being able to give my family my all and my best because when I'm feeling relaxed, every everything in the house just kind of seems to go a little smoother too. Not feeling like coming home and just feeling tired and maybe where I w you know, would put on my running shoes and go out for a run. Again, I just didn't feel like doing that. Um, and that was a big wake up call for me too because you know, I, I want to be in my 60s and 70s and, and still active and out and about and enjoying the things that I always have. And in my particular case, one thing I would notice late in the afternoon around two or three o'clock, I was having to loosen the laces of my shoes. And once I finally got home and took my shoes off and my socks, I would notice I had an indention around my ankles, which is not normal for me. And so obviously I was experiencing some swelling. Um, and that really started tipping me off to some other things that I was feeling that I had kind of just dismissed. Um, and one was really, really intense itching on my, my shins, my lower ankles. Um, and, you know, just explaining it away. Okay, let me, you know, put some lotion on, let me, and then it just never relieved it. And, you know, finally, I think that is where I kind of clued in, oh, these are related um, and these are the things that I tell patients about all day, every day, um, and I'm experiencing them. Is, you know, you have a vein on both your legs that run from, it's just like the seam of your pants. It runs from the crease of your leg all the way down to your ankle. You know, your healthy veins, they have valves and they're like doors that push the blood back up to your heart out of your legs. And being female, multiple pregnancies, um, standing on your feet for long periods of time, those are all scenarios where over time, you know, that, that vein stretches out and those valves aren't able to touch anymore. So that blood really just pulls down into your legs. You start having those symptoms. So patients that are suffering from this, they, they have a lot of options. Back in the day, the way that they treated it was through vein stripping, which was very aggressive. So now we have more non-invasive ways of treating it. So for me, I knew that, you know, laser uh, was an option. You know, there's an option, so it's kind of like a glue, uh, which leaves an implant in your leg. So, you know, I ruled that one out. And it's important for me that I found a doctor that was doing radiofrequency ablation. So when you have the procedure, uh, you know, the idea is to just kind of like starting an IV. And they will, uh, you know, access the vein and put that catheter, slide that catheter all the way up into your vein, and they use heat to close it. Uh, you know, my treatment plan was to have two RF ablations, one on the right leg, um, in the main vein and then on the left leg. So once I finish all of my procedures, uh, you know, it's, it, it is kind of surreal because I've been part of this process for so many patients and they do, they come back within, you know, the next time their follow-up scan, they're saying, oh my gosh, I don't know if it's in my head, but I'm feeling so much better. Um, and for me, because I was having that itching and aching heavy, you know, those types of symptoms within a couple of days, I had none of that. Um, 
literally once that vein was shut down and you know, my body started that healing process, I have not had any of that. My legs are feeling healthy. I'm not feeling the tiredness. I'm not feeling my shoes get tight as, I, as I'm driving. And so being able to show up in my job at 100%, show up for my family and still have the energy to engage, uh, to go out and run and do the things that I love. You know, all of these things that I enjoy, I, I got back um, just through the simplicity of the Venclose procedure.